Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen and today we are going to be talking about the long night and how we think all of this is going to play out. Right. So in the show it was literally a long night. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> in the books it's going to be lo- more than just one m- miserable night at Winterfell. Um, so, right. It's going to be dark for a while. It's going to be Ragnarok like it's going to be wild. Okay, so the first question that I have for you is everyone assumes that history will repeat itself and we'll actually see a long night kind of play out for at least a period of time in the books. But do you think that's definitely going to happen? Are we definitely going to see some sort of long night or or are they going to do something beforehand to fend off a long night? See, I don't know, because I've been trying to figure out how, like, Arctic winter it is in the Kingdom of the North, like, the Starks Mm -hmm. North, Winterfell area. Like, does it, is it so far north that it's kind of like being in parts of Alaska where you might only get an hour of sunlight in a day? Regularly. Yeah, like, when you get into winter, that entire, whatever, two, three years, whatever, of winter, two years of winter, you're getting an hour of sunlight a day. So, is it just going to be just a more absolute darkness where the sun literally never breaks the horizon? It, like, would probably, like, almost, and you'd get that, like, almost, like, dawn, but the dawn never comes. I I feel like, in terms of, like, poeticness or whatever you symbol like symbolism seeing it almost break the dawn every day and you're fighting to get a dawn like that would be kind of a cool way to symbolically represent the struggle because it's also known as battle for the dawn yes so i think that that would be kind of like a cool way where you're like at that point where the sun just barely never gets there and it keeps just not getting there the darkness isn't complete and absolute. You get like the time before the dawn where it starts to get lighter, but it never actually gets light. Now, in George's world, there seems to be some regular, the sun rises, it sets. The moon rises, it sets. Which indicates in some degree that this world is rotating. Oh, it's 100%. It's just okay. like planet Earth. So in order for the sun to kind of like never show its face in a certain area or never the, to never it would have to do with the tilt of the axis of the planet mm-hmm. compared to the position of the, the sun where we are in the orbit with the sun that'd be like a tidal lock if it got stuck in a spot where there was no sunlight hitting that area Yes. And, like, this would get into, like, some, like, crazy, well, like, astrophysics. Like, was the first night caused by an asteroid or something crazy that happened? Like, is it possible? Mm-hmm. Like, from a scientific standpoint. Right. That if you're going to explain it with science rather than magic. And George does like to do some science with magic, is what I've yeah. observed. Or, like, he uses something of a scientific explanation for, like, how the magic worked. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, like... A, some it, stuff is magical, but it's it's based in some sort of... Like, how the rules of physics do exist. So, like, yeah. if you were going to alter the rules of physics magically, you would have to at least understand the rules of physics exactly. that you're altering with magic. Right. So, something to that effect. But... And he did say it's purely... The Long Night was purely caused by a magical event right so okay so let's leave all that science aside so so do you think that we'll see in the books for a prolonged period of time a couple chapters okay we'll just call it chapters no i think that it's going to be the winds of winter and the first part of dream of spring is utter and complete darkness you do i don't think the sun will ever rise for a long do you think that's going to get time. redundant from a reader's perspective no because i think it wears on will wear on you just the way it's wearing on the characters yeah, that's going to be really hard to read. If it goes like that. Because it's like, even just in wintertime, normal. Like, yeah. you get the eight hours a day, basically, of sunlight, and that is it. 
Right. People do suffer from more depression and shit like that. It wears on Seasonal you. affect disorder. Yes. It's the name for it. Go. And I actually do think that that's something. I do too. From a, cause, from cause a biological like, standpoint, you're not getting an, a, you're not getting. It's freaking miserable. It's you're already not getting dark vitamin when D. you get out of work. Yeah, and you're not getting a lot of vitamin D, and vitamin D biologically helps yeah. improve your mood. Yeah, so you're it's not even like a psychological thing. You don't see the thing. sun at all yeah. all day. You're like, you drive to work in the morning, it's dark. Get out of work. It's dark. It's dark. Yeah, it's, that's, it's horrible. It fucking sucks. So if it's just complete darkness, like it does get, if you go really far north, the sun yeah. does not come up in the winter. You reach a point where you are just in darkness. So, and it's really cold. Like, I feel like in a way he's bringing Arctic winter, but the Arctic winter spreads farther and farther south. Yeah, yeah. Like it magically engulfs farther south Mm -hmm. it's taking something that is real and making it like magically way bigger than. and it it seems like he's got it magically contained at the moment with this wall yes that's why i do think that wall will come down i feel like it's very likely that it will come down or It'll get breached in some way. Like they will get the others will get past it because it seems like the others are the magical force that bring. So if they got around the wall, winter. even if the wall was still standing, them being on the other side of it, but it won't matter because they can still affect what's happening on the other side of it. Yes, because they because yeah. now they're on this side of it. Like right. if like the. Either it comes down or there's ice, a breach. If the Bay of Ice just freezes mm-hmm. and they can just march right around the wall so the wall doesn't stop them. Right. They're getting beyond the wall. Yes. <laughs> the other way beyond the wall. One way or another, whether they're bringing it down. Or so, part of it down. Because this is the part that, I, that makes me think that the wall will stand through it all, but they will somehow get around it. Mm-hmm. They bring up that valley, that little gully, over by uh, the Shadow Tower? Yes. Whatever they, over the bridge or whatever the bridge, where everyone falls and I can't remember the hell it's called. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. But that's a, a way that you the can bridge just... Bridge of Skulls? Wa- yeah, Bridge of Skulls. It's the one that you can just walk right around the side of the wall. Yeah, yeah, I know. And since the magic And like wildlings do it yeah. when someone, when their watch is like skimpy over So there. I'm wondering if yeah. they bring up that huge thing early on. Because I remember when I got to it, I go, that's just like an amazing oversight. Like, you can just walk around it. There's like a simple way to just walk around it. And they're not scared of falling or whatever. They're just going to run right across the bridge. Yes. Like, the dead things are just going to flood across that. And the magic doesn't protect right there. The magic's built into the wall. Why didn't you magically block that Why didn't you put it to the shore? Or is over time the shore receded? No, not on East Watch. That's over by the Shadow Tower. Uh, but you can. There's a beach that you can go around to by East Watch. It's it's like these are major oversights that needed. Like you needed to expand. Now, granted, if you keep trying to build it out into the ocean, the ocean will continuously melt it. So it's likely that maybe these things might have been filled in when Bran the Builder built it, but they're like not anymore. That's what I was just saying. Over like eight thousand years. The natural erosion. Yeah, that little... At least the beach part or something. Yeah, or like tectonic shifts or something caused... There to be this gap now. over on the western side. It's like... I I, I wonder if they're just going to get around it. Because how yeah. do you bring that... I, I just don't and George repeatedly reminds us in the story how wildlings are just going around. So, so maybe he's reminding us of that to sh- so that when that it happens later, he's like, I that said. That East Watch by the Sea is one that they would never abandon ever, and that the Shadow Tower, Tower on the far other end. No matter what, they have to be manned. They have to be manned because those are the places where you could easily get around. Yeah. Anywhere in the middle, they have to try to climb over the darn thing. Exactly. Um, it would be great if they were all manned, but they're not as vital. Because the wall will defend because itself the wall in those kind of spots. Defends yeah. itself in the fact that it's just massively huge, and mm-hmm. climbing it is terrifying. You're climbing up ice. Yeah. Um. Okay, so let's to just kind of bring it back to our purpose here. In one way or another, they're getting 
beyond the wall. The logistics of it, we kind of just went over a couple of different ways. So you think the others are going to breach the wall in some way? I think they have to because I feel like in order for them to become an actual threat. Right. The wall that is supposed to defend the realm from it, the entire purpose of its being, it is irrelevant if there isn't a prolonged struggle to hold it, followed by them falling back afterwards. So you think there'll be a battle at the wall, which the Night's Watchmen will lose? Yeah, there's 12 of them. Yeah, that's true. And with Jon Snow and all that just happened there and Bo yeah, and like Marsh the, and company the, and the, everybody's, they're all fighting. The last like 50 of them are all fighting. Yeah, there, there's like none left. There's like a couple, like I was obviously exaggerating when I said there's 12, but it's not that enormous of an exaggeration to say that there's only 12 of them. And a couple, and more are going to die in yeah, the aftermath of the like Lord Commander's death. hundreds of miles of wall that, that all 12 of them are going to be guarding. I think there's, you can put someone like every 35 miles. Or something. When I did the calculations. All right. So, what do you think is going to happen after the wall is breached? They're going to make a slow descent south. I feel like it's going to take a while for the wall to be breached because I feel like the Night's Watch will make something of a stand because of how difficult it is and the magic that protects the wall. I don't think they can get past the wall because of the magic in it. I think that they're going to tr- keep trying to attack at the ends. Castle, they're going to need to man East Watch and Castle Black. Or, no, I think I they're. Mean, I think they're going to attack the the wall. Period. Okay. <clears throat> and then once that is failing, then eventually they'll go around. Because I feel like you can't just have the others magically know exactly what they have to do to get past the wall. Okay, that makes sense. They they were they're going to attack the wall first, and then when that's failing, because the magic in the wall is not letting them get past. It's going to be the magic in the maybe, wall maybe that saves them. Maybe one of the, the others watch, will really. observe like a white just kind of getting around. Yeah, eventually. And then being like, oh, like just shambling by and then. Yeah, brainless white just running around the side of the thing. And, and then they and see like, that there's a weak spot. We can go around it. Yeah. And Jon Snow, if he was there and sees that, is going to be like, oh, fuck. It was so much better when they. It, they didn't know that. And, and they might even. Tr- Someone like Jon Snow might even think about it. They're coming right at Castle Black. Let's try to see if we can keep them contained to the middle of the wall long enough for reinforcements to arrive at the edges. Like, let's see if we can keep them busy here long yeah, enough Yeah, if there's for even a nice wa- Night's Watch to be dealing with. All right, they, so- they have quite a few wildlings, too, which if they actually all cooperate, they, they might have a chance. To man some of it, because the wildlings at the wall, I'd just say, outnumber the... Okay, so then what do you think is going to happen? How many well, chapters do you think will be devoted to this, like, battle at the wall? Dozens. Okay, you, you do? Dozens? Dozens. I, I think that the battle at the wall is going to take months. And who's POV? John? Eventually we'll have probably Davos there. We'll have... Yeah, Davos will come back. Maybe Stannis? Oh, he's not a point of view. Never mind. Maybe Asha, because she's with Stannis, right? Theon, Theon is a point of view. Okay. We don't know where the hell Bran's going to be. You think Danny will be in Westeros at that point yet? No. Okay. She won't, yeah. I don't I don't think that she'll be there yet either. The I, battle, I think... For the battle at the wall, no. No. All right, and then and then what do you think is going to happen? So they're going to slowly move south, obviously. I think once they, I I feel like in order for this to be real, if this is the long night mm-hmm. and this is the new one, it can't be. The last one was said to have lasted a generation. This is thirty five years, roughly, or right? Tw- it's twenty something years. Twenty okay. twenty something years. Okay. Yeah. That's. You can't just have it be over in a month. No. Like, it, it, that's stupid. It has to be prolonged. It has to wear on you. That's why I think it's going to be, like, the Winds of Winter is going to take place probably over, like, six months. 
and they're still going to be in the heart of it, and the last three months of it are going to be all darkness. And I think the first part, a dream of spring, the spring is going to come towards the end of the book. Yeah, because think about the title, like, yeah. It's a dream of spring. They're going to be fighting for it, and they're going to win towards the end of the book. Right, I like so that. So I think that we're going to get, I don't know, if the books are really 1,500 pages a piece, I think we're going to get at least 2,000 of those pages in complete darkness. Wow. This is the long night. Minus like again. you're interspersed with like a Danny chapter and you're some John Cons who are people south. Yeah, but I think that the darkness is going to engulf okay. not just the north. I think it is going to... In golf, by the like time King's it's all Landing, said and done, by... I think it's going to be darkness. that would be that's going to be kind of cool. That, I mean, I drew the line on the map of how far they said the first long night affected Essos, how far south it affected Essos, and the only part of Westeros that is not north of that point is Dorne. Yeah. And, like, some little fringe area of the very bottom of the reach. Like, mm-hmm. You know, like, right behind, like, the heel of Dorne. So there was, like, one little tiny part of the And it got that down, down that down far, though, over a generation. You're talking about, I mean, it, so it took 20-something years to get down that far. No, I think that that's just how far it went down in that. Okay. I see. I understand what you're saying. And when it comes to the known world. They don't move very fast, though, the others. They're already, and their movements they're already are, dead and they can't die. Why would they rush? Right, so once they're south, how far does their effect, what is their radius of effect? See, I think when you combine it with the fact that it's going to be actually the season of winter, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's darker naturally. And colder. And colder. I think... This goes back. I guess we would have to. To, I ne- had never thought of this until just now, so I don't have the answer to this. Okay. But if you were to say, actually try to come up with something resembling a scale for George's planet and Earth, and then you find how far south the complete darkness line goes mm-hmm. from the North Pole. Okay. And then you use that scale on the known world and treat it like you're, this is the Northern Hemisphere. And then you scale it that way and see how far south the complete darkness should go. Okay. Maybe you could find out if... Because it seems to me like if you're getting that far south, it would have to be something crazily magical because you're almost getting down towards like tropical areas like we're talking well it is going down to dorn is like basically going down to florida here's my question though beyond the wall it's very cold and the conditions are harsh yes however when the others come the conditions become even more harsh almost unlivable it hurts to breathe because it's so cold so but they don't always come out they're not out every night. They have a very erratic schedule. Doesn't well, I, I would imagine that they're always somewhere that night. They're just not always where our So what's their are. radius? Like, so yes, they could be eight miles from here, but I don't feel that effect of being around another. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, when you're in proximity to them, it's unbearable. But how far away do they have to be to not for me to not be able to breathe? And... If they congregate together, mm-hmm. does that radius expand? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Like this, you know how that spiral thing that they showed on the whatever? Yeah, like if they are the center of that spiral and the, and the winter spirals out from them, if they gather in greater numbers, does the spiral's power get bigger or whatever? Like, yeah, that's what does I'm... Does the radius of their unbelievably chilling cold effect expand? Yes, that's what I'm wondering. Because, yes, they're always around. Because if they continue marching south, will it get warmer behind them as they leave? This is what I'm wondering. See, <laughs> th- these, these are questions that I cannot answer, I know, I know. Because I know. <laughs> George might not even know that answer. Because that's not even something that he would have necessarily thought about. He's like, 
Oh, wait, when they keep going south, does what? it stay cold behind them? Or will summer come back up north and it'll be freezing down in the south? Cause... Because based on what we saw in the books, and if, you, if you're going to use what you've seen in the books so far, when they come in that area around them, it becomes, like, unbearable. You but... can th- almost sense that they're coming because it gets unnaturally cold. Right. So, do how is that going to work? You completely understand my question. And I don't know how that works. Okay. <laughs> and, well, I guess this is something, like... Do you Does it some remain behind? like occupied territory and like the others are like walking around like evil executioner gods walking or do they not leave anyone alive behind them anyways? So it doesn't matter because they turn everything that they get to. It's not like you're But the whites territory. don't bring the cold. The others do. So do you leave a couple others like behind so they keep the cold there and then you send some more south? See, <laughs> it, to know the answers to this, we would have to know, like, what, like if there's a motivation for what the others are doing. Right. Well, do they have a purpose? Are they trying to make the whole world... Cold? So They can like, live everywhere? So they can live everywhere. But do they need more others for that? Because so far we've only seen them turn things into whites. But we know that they must be able to turn... At the very least, babies, babies into others because Craster's sons are the others that are right there. So, and how many sons do you think he's given them? Though I don't know how many women there are. A <laughs> hundred. So there's probably like a hundred others. Is that enough to occupy the world? But were there others before? Do other people do this too? <laughs> right. Craster's the only person that we've met that does this. Right. But if. It seems unlikely that he's just like someone who made a miraculous discovery. Right. If I give them my sons, like they won't bother me. He's no, the first he's... person in thousands and thousands and thousands no, he's... of years that right. figured out to do this, and where there had to have been other others. <laughs> right to start. To start off with, to, to make the sacrifices too. So, like, what is there? Like a million of them. See, they live these, so far north in the land of always winter that no human could even go there to know that Yeah, because been you can't there. live there. Like, you can't even you breathe can't there. Even breathe and I mean there. live there, not like reside there. I mean like draw breath, like be living when you leave. Yeah, that's like those crazy guys that like actually go to the North Pole and they go to Antarctica. And like it is so cold there. So cold. That's like almost like outer space freakishly not literally like no i know and this is magical unbelievable cold and this is like that level of cold magically brought south and that level of complete darkness magically brought south by the others but we know they live beyond the wall and it's not always that cold so i'm wondering what the radius is we have no idea we don't know the answer because it's like some force or something was keeping them. I mean, they're presumably that far north. In the lands of always winter. In the lands of always winter. Is where they've been chilling. <laughs> no yeah. pun intended. We, we be chilling. <laughs> they've been chilling up there. Yeah, just hanging out. Right. And something had kept them trapped there. I mean, I had the, they were sleeping. Or they were sleeping. I think that I like your idea better than something trapped them there. Because as far as we know, there's no magical structure. There's nothing up there. They they were sleeping. I like that idea. And that's the answer that George George wrote that episode where we got that answer in the books. Interesting. We didn't use that in that What Woke the Others video. No, but he he did write that episode. What did he say exactly in that? Oh, when OSHA. OSHA, Explain it. It's like, they was sleeping. Yeah. They ain't sleeping no more, though. George wrote that episode. Which he is... wrote that dialogue, that piece of expose, and it's the same one where Sam was telling the brothers after they had killed, um, what's his name, Othor. Mm-hmm. And they're standing there, and, and Sam's like, I just found some books in the library. It's like, they, when the others wake up, he's like, I hope the wall's tall enough. Remember mm-hmm. that scene from the show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I do. George wrote that part. He was maybe giving us information of how it actually works. Why? Why would he have told us? Well, something that came fake? from him. Like, why would he tell us a fake piece of information? He wouldn't. 
Um, no, he wouldn't. It seems unlikely that in the episode that he wrote himself, he divulged completely fake information about where the others have been for all this time. So, I, Okay, so I like the idea that they were sleeping, but now we know they're awake. And yet, even still, and they're marshalling their powers, right? We do know that. Exactly. They still only have a little, uh, a, a finite radius. Well, since... <laughs> well, I mean, they don't have... If you look at the map of the world, I mean, they, they have... Uh... No, but I'm talking about with how crazy it gets, like, the Fist of the First Men. Once Sam got far enough away from the others, the conditions improved. That's what I'm talking about. Not they're where they live. Yes, they have a nice little portion of the world. I'm not saying that. I'm saying where they can affect humans. They only have a, a certain amount of range. It's not like they're... The farther they got away from the Fist of the First Men and the farther they got away from the others, the less the conditions became... The less brutal the conditions became. Yes. So we're agreeing on that. So I'm just wondering how that works. But and what I also wonder is, like what we were talking about, the their presence. This is it. Like, is it literally? They live in the land of always winter, way up at like the North Pole. Mm -hmm. That's where they've been trapped. And then. Is it like almost like a literal they are bringing that level of cold everywhere that they go as they travel south? They And it stays that way, that weather? Yeah, like they're magically pulling the cold from the North okay. Pole. Okay, yeah, that could work. Like in the cold from the North Pole, like for lack of a better way of saying it, gravitates towards them. They have like yeah. a pull on it and, it and they drag that level. That makes sense because... The saying is, winter is coming, which connotates somebody is bringing it. Yes, for something to come, generally someone has to bring it. Um, and they're going to bring now, it. Now, weather they ne bring doesn't the necessarily have a human that, or a being that brings but it. This but is in magic. this case, yeah. we have a magical being that is bringing it. Yeah, okay, so I like this. So, as they move south, the conditions are going to stay brutal cold, brutal cold, brutal cold. And then they're going to breach the wall, and it's going to continue down. And eventually reach that point that you indicated, like, right above Dorne. So Duran Martell will be fine. <laughs> I actually literally think that that's how it's going to play out. I actually think that he will do what he does. Nothing. He, <laughs> he will do nothing, and he will move his army into the passes and not let anyone else in. I, I, I literally think that. And, he, and his plan is to be the king of the ashes every, once everyone else is gone. Yeah. That's a that's that's a thought I've had for a while. I like it. And I also have always wondered why the Red Mountains got their name, because they're not like overly red looking. And I've wondered if I mean, there are desert mountains. But on the map, they're not much different than the other color mountains. So what were you thinking then? If there was another reason why. What like was, some ancient what was your theory? reason. Yeah, what was your theory? Like ba going back to the first long night? Like many people died there? Yeah. Things get names like that, sure. Like if it was literally like called the Red Mountains because it's blood. Yeah, like Red Lake. Yes. You know, George has done that before. With other geographical features. It was called, but we never get the... But we just never get the story, story behind it. But behind he's not it he's not opposed to there it is, doing that. Lake. Not actually red, but it was apparently that day. And it got renamed Red Lake. Because of Brandon of the Bloody Blade. <laughs> right, right. But yes, we're right. So there could be another reason why it's called the Red Mountain, sure. The Red Waste is also a place where many people die. Yeah. Like, the, the places blood, that he Blood, blood is lost there, it, I mean, it, yeah. It is people, it's like red places in his world seem to be where people die. So, yeah, you might be onto something there. So, what would be your theory in that case related to the Long Night? As people were trying to escape, 
they were getting hunted from the front and killed. Yeah. From they were getting killed from the front when they were trying to get away by the, and, killed from behind. People trying to enter. Yes. From the Dornish. And then the mountains ran red with blood. Yes. I see. Yeah, that's cool. So, so you think about two thousand of the but, remaining I mean, back in the day that they would have just been first men. So that who would that have been like the the first Danes killing people, and that's where I kind of lose it because it was the first men that fought. Yeah, that is where where you lose it. Well, there's there's crappy people. Yeah, I don't know what the hell this Will guy is. <laughs> Right. But this Will guy is no good. That's a family that has been up to no good forever. Like the yeah. Ullers we know are an our Andal family. Right. But I don't I don't think it says what the wills of Will are. I don't think we ever get a definitive answer on what their deal is. And just because the first men it says all banded together and fought, there could have been infighting right. beforehand. The, the first men weren't perfect. Were men there? aren't perfect. No. But how long, I guess, in a situation like where the Dornish were, if they weren't actually threatened by it. You could have a hard time getting them to... To commit to saving their enemies. Yeah, because the first men did used to fight each other. Well, people fight each other, period. Exactly. That's that's, that's, that's just, just the way it human is. human nature. We are going to fight with each other. It happens. Right. So... All right, so you think about 2,000 of the remaining 3,000 pages are going to be of a long night. I would say it has to be that as a bare minimum, and it has to engulf over a year. Mm -hmm. We can't have it be anything less than that and be worthy of calling it something like that. And it was going to be a night that went in perpetuity if they don't win. Right, of course. Those are those have to be the stakes, and it has to be a real battle for the dawn, and I th feel like that real battle for the dawn has to take place at Winterfell. Understood. They will have started to gain victories in the south. They will have pushed them farther north and farther north and farther north, and the ultimate victory will be won, where they are eliminated and defeated. At Winterfell. Because like for it to make sense, they have to get beaten backwards. And then they have to start... Then there has to be a turning point where they start pushing them back. Mm hmm And then there'll be an ultimate victory at Winterfell. And that's honestly probably what it's going to take to get the Southern Kingdoms to care. Yes. Nobody cares until it's like when right it's, there. When you're falling back and falling back and falling back. And you're fighting at the neck now. And then they get through the neck. Because once they get to the neck, the neck is, isn't going to be like swamps that are treacherous. They can just walk right up. It's oh, absolutely. frozen. Absolutely, yeah. Now it's frozen. You just walk right across it. Lizard lions and all those deadly snakes. and Now they're frozen. They're dead. Right. Now the neck, you can just walk right through it. And then you no, just I, keep under, going. I understand, right? So, but in order for them to then, then the people of the south get involved, and then together you can push them back up north. It has to be that combined with some magical freaking revelations. There's got to be some magical knowledge gained, probably by Bran. Sam, Sam and them have already started figuring out. Like we need dragon glass. Dragon glass will kill these things. Sam already figured that out. Stannis knows it. This has been established. They're going to make incredible numbers of those weapons. And then, Do you think Stannis will be in the fight in the Battle for the Dawn? I hope so. I hope so, too. I don't think Stannis is going to live through... Yeah, that's fine, but will he be there? I think Stannis will die fighting. I want him to be at the Battle for the Dawn. I think he... He should, at the very least, make it through several of the battles with the others. Yeah, I'd like that. In my opinion. I don't want him going down in the first one. No. I think that... He's already resolved himself to the fact that he's probably going to die fighting for this cause. So the foreshadowing, or whatever you want to call it, is already there. This is the war I think he was born to fight in. But I, I would like him to at least get through a few battles, yeah. 
I think... Do you think John's going to live? Yes. Do you think Danny will live? Hmm. I do. I think if Danny dies, she dies in the battle for the dawn. Yeah, yeah, she'll die that way. John's not going to stab her. No, it. I, I'm not even talking about that. Yeah. Because no. the notion that the world could almost end, and then the first thing that they do is John is they start acting like complete buffoons and trying to kill each other after they just managed to. And being that. catty and petty towards the girl that literally just saved her life. That won't happen in George's version of events because the fighting, the they, the thing that this show royally fucked up is that they reversed the two. The infighting and the pettiness will come first. Or maybe that's just their commentary on the world, like that people are this, I mean, you have a lot of faith in people and maybe you have too much. Cause I think I have less than most people. But if you don't think that people can survive something crazy and then automatically and then go Im- back... No, and then immediately, usually there would be like that time of bonding where we all just fought side by side. That would be like the equivalent of France and England turning around after the end of mm-hmm. World War Two and fighting with each other like they had for centuries before. All right, I get what you're saying. Like yes. it just seems like after a struggle of that magnitude where you just fought together, the, turning around and immediately Yeah, immediately. It immediately was... starting to kill each other. I I feel like the peace would last at least a generation afterwards. Well, New hostilities really, really, will come Danny about in the next Danny was still one. just fighting with the people that she was fighting with before. The battle for the dawn mattered, mattered nothing to the people she fought in the show. Never did, and so they were just waiting for her when she got done. But forget about the show. So anyway, I don't know if we... Do you have any other thoughts you wanted to add? Or any predictions? Any cool battle things that you think might take place? Or I've thought about where I think like the big battles will be fought. Yeah. I think the neck is another big place okay. where a big battle will be fought. I actually think that after the wall is breached, the next place that the, they will try to fight them will be the neck. Why? Narrow. Mm. You can make your That's a good you point. can make your numbers really count in mm-hmm. a narrower space where they can't engulf you. Understood. Um, you think that'll fail? They will lose and get pushed back through the net. At which point, the rest of the realm is going to... Have to get involved. They'll have to take notice. I think a couple of people will show up at the neck. I think at the neck is where we might see Aegon the first time. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I like this. Because word is going to travel, and there's going to be doubt. Is this real? But when the northerners really start flooding out of the north, and they are, like, terrified running for their lives... That's going to spread like wildfire, and it's going to be like serve as confirmation. And I think that's when Aegon is going to prob- maybe even break off his siege of King's Landing. And if turn, he's still doing that. Yeah. If he's still doing it and turn north and be like, we have to go. Then that's where it gets really shifty. Where do, do the others expand once you they think get they'll go through. to the Isle of Faces? If George, the Weirwoods are connected if, to... If George created the Isle of Faces and we never go there. I think they're going to go there because it says in an annotation that the Weirwoods and the others are connected. I'm going to be really upset if we never go there. So they might then go there if that's a sacred place to them or whatever. They're connected to these Weirwoods. I wonder if that black water will freeze. The underground water? No, because the temperature below ground won't change. Interesting. Once you get a certain level below ground, the temperature never changes. No, I know that. But even the water that's coming, that's a... So if the the water is 
a product of the environment it's in that far below the ground. Understood. The weirwoods, in order to like, be... Have you ever been in a cavern? That cavern's roughly the same temperature year-round. Yeah, no, I, I do understand that, yeah. Okay, so any other last cool thoughts or wishes for the long night in the books? I just more wanted to pick your brain. I've thought about it. Once they get past the neck, mm -hmm. I don't know where you go next because it's wide. You can it's wide open, especially when they bring something that freezes everything. They can just walk across the rivers. They don't even have to bother to find passes. Mm -hmm. It just basically turns it into an unobstructed thing where they can go anywhere. I mean, mountain passes and stuff like that. I mean, they'll obviously have to travel between things. I think a lot of the characters will be spending time in these underground. One of the other places that I think is uniquely positioned to withstand, it could be the veil, which is interesting to think about. Yeah, the veil and Dorne, could, two like, places Two that, places that have consistently been a problem for Targaryen, the history, rule, for the Targaryen the rule and just like throughout history. Who are the antithesis of others? Fire magic, yes. ice magic, and, and the those two places, places that have been a thorn in the Targaryens, the fire magic people's side, are Vale and the Dorn. Because and Dorn, there's the only Dornish. one way into the Vale. Yeah, it's you have to go up the whatever road, Stone Road. I don't remember what the hell they call that road, mm -hmm. but that's it. And then you have to go to the Bloody Gate. Like that yeah. is a place that there's only one way in. So they might be well positioned to withstand a long night, which could also potentially be why Littlefinger's sitting there. <laughs> Littlefinger and Duran, who we think are the, friends. The, the two guys who are sitting in the places that you can't get to. You can't. The rest of the realm will get ravaged. By the others. There's nothing to stop them from going anywhere else in the realm. But those two huge mountain ranges All right. are quote our natural barrier. Yes. Which could make things interesting. I don't know what will happen next after that. Yes, me either. But anyways, I hope that you guys fun. enjoyed our speculation on how I think and she thinks the long night might end up going. I've tried breaking it down into like actual physical locations and logical train of events, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any other thoughts or input on it, I'd love to see your comments though. And make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and do all that other good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.